Hello everyone and welcome to episode 14 of The Moaning Show. I'm HED Rules 0001. Now first off, I have to apologise to the person who sent in a request for the show. I will be answering that request next time around. So this time I'm going to get on with the subject at hand, which is all about the television schedules. Now, I have complained about this in the past, but that was certain programmes and not necessarily the TV schedules in general. So we'll kick it off at the start of the day. Um, you've got the breakfast programmes, which are understandable. They let you know what's going on in the world, any uh, traffic reports if you're using uh, traffic to get to work or school or wherever. And then it goes downhill quite fast. Uh, first off, you've got, um, and this is just BBC, you've got the god-awful, um, sort of like, programme in the morning where it's either about consumer rights or, you know, programmes like, have you got a relative you don't know about? How would you know? You know, that... You know, just, just programmes like that. Or the one that's on at the moment, Wanted Down Under. This is where a family go to Australia slash New Zealand or wherever. At our expense, the licence uh, fee payers' expense, they get a week's holiday. And to, it's basically to see if they could stand life in Australia or wherever the programme's being held. And 90% of the time, uh, the family really enjoy themselves and they do the maths on the, you know, with a calculator on the table to see what their expenses are in the UK and what their expenses would be if they lived in Australia. And nine times out of ten, um, they're much better off in Australia. It says a lot for our economy, doesn't it? But not only are they better off in Australia you know they seem to be enjoying themselves obviously because it's somewhere new but the worst thing about this particular program is when you get the video of the family saying oh we love you we don't want to go we don't want you to go <laughs> and 90% of the time you will see the mum of the house cry her eyes out and or the teenage daughter of the family cry her eyes out. So life is a family of, of, I don't know, six. A family of five, okay? You've got the mum, the dad, and three kids, this daughter, and two younger boys, so like age 10 and 12. Everyone will be fine with going, apart from the teenage daughter, who's got loads of friends or got a boyfriend back in England and she won't go. And the, at the end of the programme, they have to flip these stupid fucking cards with a Union Jack on it or the flag of the country they're visiting to say where they want to go. And all of the time, this teenage daughter or the woman of the family will go Britain because of family and friends. Now... I did a version of this about 10 years ago when I left Surrey to come down to Devon. And in all honesty, you don't miss your friends or your family. Well, you don't miss your family because they're always phoning you up or they can phone you up, you can phone them up, no problem. You know, it's made, this the programme is made for dramatic effect you know to go, oh no what a situation it's not a situation i strongly predict that you know with nine out of ten families that go on the program they know they're not going to go but they get a free holiday out of it it's not a bad idea not a bad idea and that's the start of the day I do apologise for the uh, camera juddering. The light today is crap. But uh, I've been told that speaking to you face to face rather than just with the Moaning Show logos a bit more formal. 
but that's just the start of the crap on the telly at the moment next you've got the absolutely diabolical homes under the hammer now with homes under the hammer it's an interesting idea i'll grant bbc that for a start you've got the two presenters they walk around the house they find out who buys it at auction hence the title of the program and then they go back a period of time later to see what the renovation of the house is like not a bad idea but it's on every bloody day and you just know that the people doing the renovations or moving into the house houses that are empty or whatever at the start of the program every single bastard one of them has got more money than you and that's one reason i don't like it the second reason is it's on every bloody day third reason is if they were to go back to a property after two months and not, either nothing's been done or the work hasn't been completed they still get the fucking um estate agents round to go like this with a clipboard it's like oh yes yes yes, yes. well i've looked at the plans and who fucking cares the house isn't finished piss off apologies for my language in this particular episode there is a disclaimer at the bottom in the description when you're watching it so tough titties and then we get on to what i call the disease of the television at the moment antiques programs now probably programs are all over the place on itv channel 4 whatever but these fucking antique programs are all over the shop we start with cash in the attic or shit in the shack as i like to call it and i'm all for clearing out clutter there's a lot of clutter in here you can see in that sort of area but it's the same every day and it's like raising money nine times out of ten for a good cause like trip trip to go and see your family abroad or whatever but this is on every day sometimes twice a day you know on bbc2 bbc1 whatever and you've got this and oh <laughs> every bloody day same thing then you've got bargain hunt or boring hunt as i like to call it again good idea for a show the antiques and property program seem to be one of the most popular things on the tv and like i say good idea but these programs have been on the tv now for 10 plus years it's time to do something new with the mornings then you get the news if you're lucky and <laughs> news these days is repeating itself as well if it's not good afternoon this is the news there has been a suicide bomb attack in islamabad really never would have fucking guessed that or the economy is up the creek without a paddle really i didn't know that last week it was all right if there's not news about the economy if there's not news about a suicide bomb or terrorist attack or explosions in gaza or whatever then it's news to me because you've got suicide bombers they've been going at it 10 plus years now you've got fight in afghanistan iraq or whatever you've got the connie story and it's quite frankly it's getting a bit boring you know uh, the recent house fires uh 
that killed all members of one family. Alright, extremely tragic for them, their neighbours or, you know, and other members of that particular family. But it was fresh news. Do you know what I'm getting at? Fresh news. And I don't know what it is, maybe I'm getting cynical, but whenever the news comes on, I'm looking for different things other than, you know, fighting Afghanistan, Iraq, bombing and all sorts of that trouble going on, so like hate crimes or, or this thing about the papers, phone hacking, it's old news. Finish that particular news, get it all sorted and bring us some fresh news. I'm bored. I'm extremely bored. But the Antiques Property Program, they don't finish in the morning. You think they, we would have enough of crap on the telly in the mornings, but no. They put more on in the afternoon. Flog it. It's on every single bastard day. And when I say every single bastard day, I mean every single bastard day. Flog it. Cash in the attic. Um... Place in the sun. Location, location, location. They're on every single bloody useless boring bastard day. Every single bastard day. They're on Saturday and Sunday. Give us. That's what the weekend's for. Give us some time off. Fuck's sake. Again, this language has been brought to you by Matthew Adams. <laughs> but... That's what I mean. And then we get the news in the evening. Pete's the same news that we had at one o'clock or whatever. <laughs> then after the news, we get two to three hours of soap tonight. Great. Anything for us guys to watch? Okay, we get the odd football match. I say the odd football match. We had got Sky. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the soaps are on too much. There's too many soaps on too many times a week. Emmerdale's on five nights a week. EastEnders on four nights a week. Corrie, at least three nights a week, possibly four. Um, EastEnders... I think over the Christmas period, we had a period of... My apologies for that. <laughs> like I say, EastEnders. There was a period of, I do believe, maybe apart from one day here or there. There was never two days without it over Christmas and New Year. I do believe there was a solid 11 days straight. Not one, two, three, four, five... 11 days straight of EastEnders and more to the point Christmas night there was all the major soaps on Emmerdale, EastEnders, Coronation Street Hollyoaks maybe I don't bloody know they were on for an hour each Christmas night Made sometimes an hour and a half each. I think EastEnders was on one one day over Christmas. Christmas night, I didn't see my mum. They had Doctor Who, and then Strictly Come Shitheads. That's another thing as well. I'll come back to in a moment or three. <clears throat> but they had all of that stuff, one after the other, Christmas night. And, like I say, I didn't get to see mum at all Christmas night. And I really do not know why they have to be on every single day. But then we get the odd gem that is good on the television. Just very recently, uh, two programmes made a return that were in my opinion extremely good last year in terms of 
uh, Sherlock uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch, Martin Freeman, which in my opinion is on for too long and only three times a series. Now, they should make Sherlock an hour long for six episodes or an hour long for four episodes. An hour and a half is too long. It's just too long. It's as simple as that. And the quite brilliant Mrs. Brown's Boys. Now, if you haven't seen Mrs. Brown's Boys, it's a bloke dressed up as an old woman, set in Ireland, he is Irish, um, and he is matriarch of the family. You look past the mere fact that it's a man dressed as a woman, because it's an old woman, you can more or less forget that. It's got everything that Father Ted had, even the swearing. But it's filmed live in front of an audience. And you can also, whenever there's um, a cock up or a mess up in the script or whatever, or, or something like that, they leave it in and they continue on with the script. For instance, there's a, one of, the mother's um, children is a girl, is a, is a woman, and she can't keep a straight face. There was an incident in last week's episode where there was some sort of like sad violin music over where she was about to cry or something like that. And all of a sudden, he'd get up, he'd walk out the set, and he'd go to these people that were actually playing the violin on set and say, Piss off! You know, just brilliant television. If you haven't seen Mrs. Brown Boys, look it up on YouTube. It is hilarious. Watch it. Watch it now. After this, obviously. <laughs> but not a lot of these decent these days. You've got the reality programs, which I mentioned in another moaning show. I won't go into too much detail. But what I would say is this. You've got a heck of a lot of people that are in reality shows like Big Brother or whatever. They're famous because they're in that. But these property programs, specifically uh, um, Kirsty Allsop and the guy who presents the same show with her, I can't quite remember his name. But they are famous for nothing these people are raking in the cash raking in the pounds and so like opening fates and supermarkets and stuff like that for absolutely no reason whatsoever these people on like only ways essex and made in chelsea and all that crap these people are famous these people are looked upon as being celebrities by the society that's ill. I'm talking about everyone watching this. I'm not trying to take the piss out of you. I'm saying we are making these people famous. We are making these people wealthy. And they have next to no talent whatsoever. That's all I'm going to say about uh, reality TV. And the mere fact, obviously, that when one reality program stops another one starts um we've recently had i'm a so-called celebrity get me out of here that stops and then as soon as that and obviously strictly that stopped and then all of a sudden we've got dancing on ice and celebrity big brother back it never finishes give us a break for christ's sake television bosses now, another thing that really gets my goat is the trailers they show. I don't know if BBC are the only ones to do this, but the trailers that are shown each and every, you know, in between programmes, so that if a programme finishes five minutes early, they'll show trailers of what's coming up in the next few days. Specifically trailers for, you know, what the BBC would call their big shows like Sherlock, uh, EastEnders, Doctor Who is a main, um, is a massive show for the BBC. I'm a fan of it, so I don't particularly want to know what's going to happen in the story uh, before the story appears on the television, usually on a Saturday night when it has been 
broadcast since it came back in 2005. For instance, there was um, an episode of the Cybermen this year and uh, a returning character. And we knew that the Cybermen were in it basically the following day after the previous episode because of the fact that the BBC said, coming soon, Doctor Who, he meets the Cybermen. It's like, we don't want to know. We know Doctor Who's on, or we know Sherlock's on, we know EastEnders is on. Stop showing us what happens a week before we see it. One of the big trailer things is, so like if... Um, an episode of Doctor Who or Sherlock has just finished. And then they show a trailer. Not the end of the episode, because sometimes it says next time. We always flick over the channel before we see anything. But say like if it's finished. Or Downton Abbey or anything. It'll show a trailer for next week's programme as soon as this one's finished. It's like, hey, what? We just watched it. Piss off! But one of the worst bloody things about TV these days, specifically um, these sort of reality slash property development gardening cookery programs or whatever, is coming up. And they show you more or less what's exactly going to happen in the next half hour or next hour or whatever. And there's no need to watch the rest of the program even one of my favorite programs uh total wipeout or winter wipeout is notorious for this it's like coming up <whistles> we know get on with a bloody program stop telling us what's coming up and show us what's coming up and just the last thing before i begin to close this show is the fact that I'm, I'm, I've written this episode out on plan. I did it a few days ago now. But TV seems to keep all of its decent stuff, as far as I'm concerned or as far as my family's concerned, into a space of about two or three nights. Now, I'm all for, you know, top quality programming when it's good. But they never space it out. It's never one thing on a Monday, one thing on a Tuesday, one thing on a Wednesday, or two things on a Wednesday, or two things on a Thursday. It's always three or four things on a Saturday, four things on a Sunday. There's never anything on the telly Tuesday or Wednesday night. It's all crap. And that's even with a football match. So... Basically, that's it for this edition of The Moaning Show. Um, again, I do apologise for the strong language used in this particular programme. It's just the fact that when it's something I'm moaning about, is something that I don't exactly cherish it, but it nurtures me or entertains me or entertains us all. Because, let's face it, not many people have got much money to do much else now. So we have to stay in and watch the telly. So, like I say, um, that's it for this edition of the Moaned Show. Uh, the requested episode from a Mr. Carey will be uh, answered in the next edition. Uh, don't forget to keep an eye out for my new shows, uh, My Top 5, uh, which is when I list a bunch of things and... Uh, give my opinions on why they should be in the order that they are. Um, as I say, make any uh, comments or replies in the comment box or on Facebook like people have been doing. And uh, I'll see you next time for more moaning. <laughs>